All right, so it is a weekend once again upon us, and of course, exciting times both in the Western Cape and here on the High Fault. We'll focus on the High Fault, where we have a 10 race program. The first of those 10 races gets underway at a five past 12. We will be discussing a Scottsdale racing when we look forward to Sunday racing once again from Peter Marisburg. Right, Jack, without further ado, let's talk about our panelists, and it is, of course, the revered duo of Darren Burroughs. Telephonically, and uh, in studio is uh, Daryl Marie. Daryl, it has been a nice week uh, leading up uh, to a uh, Saturday racing, and uh, we're certainly looking forward to a uh, good exotics and jackpots. Just for those who are joining us recently, it is jackpots if it is a ten race program starting in races of five and seven respectively, but the other exotics start in their normal positions. Talking about first exotic, it is a bipod, and uh, in the first leg of the bipod, you've gone with the horse that really did crash the eye as a possible banker. I have, Cecil. Uh, that's because my perm is quite costly. I originally had two runners, but uh, that would um, make the perm 900 rand. So I've opted to bank number one across the pond. Um, very promising debut. I thought she was an unfortunate loser on that occasion because uh, Dennis got his um, whip entangled. Um, took so, quite some time to change it. But when um, she hit the line, she hit the line running. And another stride, she would have been... Uh, not contesting this race because uh, she would have been a winner. So Dennis gets the opportunity to get it right um, second time round. And I think if she just reproduces that effort, she'll be good enough to run in the top two. Um, of the unraced runners, possibly number eight, Milo's Millionaire. She's a half-sister to Grappler, who won a, won a good few races up the straight over sprinting trips. Um, yeah, if you want to go wider, you could possibly add five and seven, but I've banked it just because of the cost of the perm. Okay, just because of the cost of the perm. Now, Mr. Burrows, uh, good morning to you once again. Darren, I did hear a bit uh, of a whisper about Vision of Peace, and this was a couple of days before the race itself and was backed in at one stage, was the favourite, so it was a commendable effort from the runner-up across the wind. Your thoughts, is this across the pond, rather? Do you think we can actually have a little strike on that uh, 28 to 10 right now on offer? Um, not for me. I think she's a big runner, but I think this is a tough little field, you know. I thought uh, across the pond, a, a great debut at a big price. But then you've got horses like It's Her Way and Kindred Heart that also ran against each other on debut uh, behind Famous Lady. And Kindred Heart was backed into 28 to 10 from the Crawford Stable and she wasn't disgraced. That was over 800 meters. Maybe she's looking for the 1160. So you can't really say numbers one, five, and seven, they're all lightly raced. I wouldn't know which one to go for. And then your first time, Milo's Millionaire from the Sean Terry stable, a lovely pedigree. Give me the green light out of a Fortwood mare. I see they've climbed into the four to one, into seven to two anti post. So this could be anything. So I would include all of one, five, seven, and eight. Okay, let's just uh, confirm that bipod as we look forward to twelve forty, the off time to race two. Bank of the one, and then it is a two, six, and a nine in of the last leg. Four hundred and fifty rand, as Darren says. Daryl rather suggests he could have gone a couple of horses, but he's uh, confident that across the pond will cross the line first in race number two. Okay, another interesting uh, betting race, race number three. We know that uh, Donny comes back uh, to the races, had shown promise uh, at the start of its f brief career and uh, now has uh, seen uh, the Gelding come through. Perhaps we'll see an improvement. Blinkers are on. Ryan Munger gets a ride from the Sean Terry Stable, an interesting combination there. They've had uh, very brief encounters and it was a win and a fourth place in Darren. We'll start uh, with you, race three, the first leg off of the PA. There's a light, a very good win in those same colours for the stable just uh, 24 hours ago with Melech, as you suggested, and that uh, both you and Daryl suggested. With the drop in class, shouldn't be any worry at all in that 1,200 uh, metre pinnacle stakes at Turpentine yesterday. Yes, definitely. You know, I, I just hope main defenders are okay because um, it didn't look good uh, just before the finish line. Um, but he was a beaten horse. Melek was uh, cruising alongside him and passed him. Um, we did suggest uh, play cautiously. Main defender is beatable in this type of race from the draw. And uh, I hope that the viewers uh, followed. Now, my pick six yesterday went out one leg 
with number 11, Dubai Hills. Very unfortunate because we had the results otherwise. Now, race three, you've got to include there's the light on that good last run. Doni's not out of it. The blinkers go on. He's shown ability in the past. He's been calded. He'll be there. And Montebello and the Playboy Bomber, the first-timer. Thank you so much. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Marie, you are selecting the uh, PA for us. And uh, Darren does suggest there's a light, obviously, that uh, last run, the form line is just uh, proving so, so potent. And indirectly, the winner of race three, the Mike de Gaulle course, uh, no place like home, had actually run uh, just behind uh, midwinter, uh, mm -hmm. midwinter Wind, who has uh, come through and uh, notched up at two successive wins. Very good wins, in fact. Yes, um, but if you like these lights, you have to give a chance to Galadorn, Cecil, number five. Galadorn was actually uh, finishing stronger over the 1200. So last time I'd seen the Wick Riders race, I must be honest, he got a horrible ride. Um, so don't discount Galadorn's chances. I know the other one has got more chance, uh, more scope for improvement and going to strip fitter. But I don't think there'll be much separating the two of them. I think Doan, if he was drawn well, um, and I knew his well-being, he'd certainly be my top pick at form line. Although it only shows one winner from eight runners, um, there have been multiple indirect winners. No place like home being one of them. Al Bayreg interests me. He comes back in trip. I don't think he stayed last time out. And in his penultimate start, he actually looked like a winner. So from a one draw, I think he'll improve. And then... Um, I know he brings work rider form into the race, but this was Montebello wasn't suited by the inside track last time out, and it was good improvement. So I can see him build on that effort. So I've gone wide in the opening leg of the pier. Better safe than sorry. Let's confirm that uh, place accumulator. Be reminded, race three, the third of ten, is over the 1400, and uh, we should be underway at a quarter past uh, one. That is the PA suggested uh, by Mr. Marie and a total outlay of 300 rand. We're still a maiden company for race four, the first leg of the year, pick six. It gets underway at 10 minutes to two. The distance remains that of 1,400. Race number four, uh, Mr. Marie, before we get uh, to Darren's uh, look at his uh, pick six, uh, we've got a short price favorite in the form of the Roy Magna runner number one, a Springer. And that is uh, coming off a bit of a break, 79 days. So where do you rank that on your picking order? Second. Okay. Um... Yeah, Cecil, many will say that was a disappointing effort last time out. Uh, she did have the worst of the draws to contend with. And I'm not concerned about the form line of that race because this isn't a strong lineup itself. But my worry is I didn't like the way she moved last time out. When she moved to the start, I thought, no, she's, she's going to really have to warm up in the running. She did do her best work late. Um, and I respect her because this isn't... Uh, a strong lineup like I touched on. So I'll give her a chance. What I'm saying to the viewers are is if you if you are gonna have a bet on her, wait until you see her in the canter past. If she moves much better, I, th I think she'll she'll go close to winning. Number seven, Lady Lennox was meant to run last week. She was scratched because of incorrectly uh, in equipped. That's correct, sir. So she was ready. Um I loved her debut on the inside track of a 1200. She caught the eye. I mean, we've seen what one foul swoop has gone on to do. Then next time out, I think that was too soon. Uh, being backed up quite soon. Now she's had time to strengthen up. She's a nice uh, big daughter by Global View. I think if she pushes forward, she she could possibly win this race. And then I've got respect for number 11, Zenobia's Gold. You can see on debut, she only got beat four lengths by Kawalami in her second start. She got beaten 10 lengths. So possibly below par in her second start. It all depends on her well-being returning from a rest. Yeah, I remember that Golden Tachana race as if it was uh, yesterday. It was actually two feature seasons back in that case in uh, the uh, Western Cape. I think uh, Pierre Strader, if memory serves me right, rolled uh, Golden Tatiana. But uh, let's uh, task uh, the man who's in the Western Cape himself for uh, race number four. Uh, the uh, Golden Tatiana form line certainly would bring the 11 into the uh, equation. How wide would you suggest you would go in uh, the uh, pick six here? Um, I've played the safe route because I wasn't happy with the way Springer moved in her last two starts, even when she ran third uh, beyond Heart Peaks. Um, I just thought she was a bit scratchy, and now she's rested. 
Um, so she's not one to trust for me. I wouldn't take 11 to 10 about her, but she can win. Um, others to consider Lady Lennox. She's rested. Um, her form lines aren't bad, and I think she could come back with a bang. Uh, you got Zenobia's gold. I thought uh, she's got the draw in her favour. Um, she's running against winners in both her starts. She could improve. Uh, those are the leading lights. So Springer, Lady Lennox and Zenobia's gold. Let's have a look at that uh, pick six, which uh, starts at uh, 10 minutes to two race number four, one, seven, 10 and 11. I'm glad you've thrown in a Rio Yana, although the trainer did suggest when interviewed pre-race uh, that uh, the, it would need a far, far further. But you never know with these good horses once they've had that uh, pipe opener. There is the banker in at uh, the third leg, number nine, and uh, it's the field at the back, uh, race number nine. Okay, so we're out of the maidens as we get into race number five. Race five is a graduation plate again over the 1400 meters. Just there, if you're joining us, welcome to you. It is on the stand side with race and its first race of 10 at uh, five past the 12. Now in race number five, the first leg of the first the jackpot, the second jackpot gets in out over, underway rather, in a race number seven. The uh, colors we saw to good effect of a free movement too. Could it be a bit of value, but who am I to... Uh, Suggest that or uh, plant wrong ideas in your head. But uh, the stables certainly seem to have turned the corner and their strike rate with their limited uh, runners certainly is uh, quite impressive. Yeah, Mr. Sage has always been a top trainer in my books. Um, yeah, he's not one to consider on the ratings, yeah. free movement, but you know, he's an honest sort and he should be thereabouts once again. Bioforma, last time out in my mind, cracking efforts, gave just nuisance. Uh, eight kilograms on a track that he's not suited by so he's got enough gait speed to get into a prominent position but he's um this is a hard race though red bomber i like the fact that he's coming back in trip i'm actually i'd prefer him up the straight but I, he has to be included uh, he always looks like he's uh, gonna contend for uh, for top honors and then just flatters to deceive so he he's a natural inclusion mount darwin beats a, a four a field of no depth but he could be anything, Cecil. I like the. F I actually like Copper Mister Bi. Don't know his well-being, but he's always been a nice sort. And I've always said to myself, wait until the son of uh, Master My Fate's gelded. So he, he does return as a gelding now. I'm keen to see how he goes. And then the favourite in the race, uh, Mia Mu. You know, she was up on the pace last time out, uh, just behind Mary's Green Light and Key Element. Uh, she was doing very little in the latter stages and picked up quite a hefty penalty. Uh, I'd like to see her ridden with more patience this time around, and she could certainly feature. She's the one to beat at the ratings, but that's debatable. Okay, Mr. Burrows, you've got uh, the, the one or two others that we haven't even touched on yet. Uh, the likes of uh, Tur Connell certainly made an impressive return after that uh, break uh, for the Mike DeCock stable. And uh, looking at uh, the field itself, as uh, Daryl says, Three free movement wouldn't be considered at the ratings. Are your thoughts, because you are going to suggest the jackpot for us. Um, well, I can't believe that Mia Mu got such a big penalty for pretty much uh, stopping at the finish, running seven and a half lengths off the winner. Um, I, I really can't believe that. So mm. even though she's best weighted, I, I don't think she should be best weighted. Um, Red Bomber's a big runner, but I am waiting for this horse to sprint. Um, it's been a while since they've dropped him back to the sprinting trips. Um, I think he's going to be best over 1,200 meters. The 1,400 is stretching him a little bit, but he does just see it out. So if he's held up for as long as possible and can give that burst that last bit, he can win. Uh, Bio Farmer, a big horse. Um, he takes time to unwind that big action. He'll be competitive. And Turk Connell, I gave a chance because he is highly regarded. All right, so it is uh, one of those uh, races uh, where I think uh, you cannot really be affirmative about anything. Mia Mu, obviously, there was that run post made in, in a feature race and then the guineas. That's the outlay of uh, the uh, jackpot one starting in race five, and that's just the 40 rand. Uh, thanks very much uh, to Darren. And it should be on by 14 at 25 for the start of a graduation plate over the 1400.
You Can't Hurry Love. We were talking about the You Can't Hurry Love in a race uh, that uh, was once upon a time dominated uh, by uh, Give Me the Green Light. We were talking about uh, the uh, classic a few years back. I think uh, give, Got the Green Light uh, came through to win. That was a Give Me the Green Light. And then you had uh, the horse that keeps escaping me. Robbie Sage's horse that was in the Green Laser. Gl- green Laser. And then third place was You Can't Hurry Love in that race. Yeah, green lasers in How do we link to Hong this Kong. race? Hong Kong. <laughs> right, and there's one of quite a decent race out there. Anyway, over to you. And uh, the race itself. This is a middle stakes. Average uh, merit rating is 89. Again, looks a very good Saturday's uh, competitive uh, race meeting at Turpentine. Yeah. Uh, you know, Cecil Presley, in his penultimate start, he caught my eye. That's the reason why I fancied his chances last time out. And in running, he actually was one of the first horses to come off the bit. But yet he still finished the race off. So I think he's crying out for the extra. You know, Jan Janssen van Vieren has always rated the son of Oratoria. Yes. He said he'll go through the divisions. So he's only got 54 to shoulder. He could be much better than his rating over this distance. And um, I certainly give him a winning chance. You know, Ryan Munger brought home the bacon for the stable last week. So maybe um, lightning strikes twice. Uh, the horse I backed him up with is oh, Willow's Wish. Huh? Yes. Oh, yes. Willow's Wish. Now, you can see he's never far off. But if you go into the ratings of his last start, he wasn't well treated. And he actually ran well above his rating of 94. Um, goes well of the distance. Um, Ant gets aboard him. I think he'll give him a nice patient ride. And I expect him to finish in the money if he repeats his last start. So I'm going... Uh, short of yeah, I've only gone for numbers two and nine. Two and a nine. I'm glad you didn't say Willow's Express. I'm glad Willow's Express because I've washed my hands for now. <laughs> Mr. Burrows, I believe that you are of the same thought process. Of course, of Presley's last uh, win, which was post maiden, was emphatically franked with uh, the uh, running on uh, runner up on that occasion coming through and going handy and winning a nice race, La Muhal, a couple of weeks later. Yes, you know, I, I was really impressed with uh, Presley's maiden victory uh, from the deep draw. Um, he really has a, he's got a beautiful action. He turns it on and uh, he, with 54 kilos, he could be well ahead of the handicapper, even though he's not well treated at the weights. Uh, last time out as well, he's got a terrific burst of speed and he got up to win. Uh, the trip's going to be ideal and I've, I've chosen to bank him in the pick six, even though Indian Ocean is my best bet in the, the eighth race, who I've actually gone two horses with. Um, I've included that horse, uh, Bonetta, with her. But Presley, I've taken my chances, banked him, and I thought he was an each-way bet because you're getting eight to ten a place and four to one a win. Okay, so that's an each-way place about uh, Mr. Presley. And it certainly looks uh, set to, to go through the divisions, quote-unquote, to the expectations of the stable. Thanks so much, Darren. That is the each-way selection race number six. Right, we're heading to race seven when we come back. And that, of course, is our top liner of the afternoon. Proudly brought to you by the sponsors of our waiter to win our feature on the afternoon at Turpentine race number seven, which also sees the start of the second and final jackpot, is at the Betway London New Stakes. They'll be going over the 1800 meters, and uh, you'll be looking for Bless My Stars in those uh, familiar silks. Well, it will be familiar if you go back a few years. It is the colors of the overseas based ownership Team Valor in partnership with the Sings, who are uh, generally based in uh, KZN, an uh, old and successful partnership. And Bless My Stars is in their silks. That is your favorite in race number seven but uh, we're looking at a uh, race that is uh, filled with all sorts of possibilities yes uh, there's no doubt bless my stars has got the class uh, but this is a prep run uh, she's not going to be readied up for this she's got a uh, big fish to fry Cecil. so if she does get it right uh, her class will pull her through you know i've always underrated this fully but if you have a look at her form it's outstanding Cracking run in the Hollywood beds, Durban July. Um, then in the uh, um, the Summer Cup, it was a great effort after getting uh, left from a knee draw, so she was caught far back. Um, like I say, if she gets it right, it's strictly because of her class, she, and, and she certainly has enough. Um, I like Meridius's chances, yeah. He's very fit. I don't think the he quite got the run of the race in his last two starts. 
Uh, Chase will know him better this time round, and from a two draw, he is going to get the cover that he needs. He's got a lovely turn of foot, so he'll be there, but he's certainly got fitness on his side. And then don't discount street art. I think this horse has been flying under the radar. He's he's going to win something uh, more than a handicap, and Yari gets his opportunity. Uh, there isn't much pace in the race, barring his stable companion, uh, which is Electric Gold. And if he gets it easy up front, um, he, he's I think he's capable in in a race of this manner, so or this sort. So obviously, Bless My Stars is class package. Uh, let's see how she goes. Mr. Burrows, uh, bless my stars' victory on a Saturday or expected victory with the likes of Safe Passage also coming through to challenge would be a good pointer to the future race on Sunday at Scottsville because we do see the return of a recent Summer Cup winner Royal Victory to the track. So do we just look at a race seven in isolation? Um, two horse race for me, bless my stars and Safe Passage. Uh, they met in the Summer Cup. There wasn't much between them. And uh, the, there's no weight reversal or anything like that. But now, Safe Passage is drawn out at 11, where Bless My Stars can just get in the pocket, um, in the box seat from the draw, and she's going to have every chance. So I thought Bless My Stars close to a banker, um, even though she returns after a bit of a break. I'm sure they've done their work with her, and she'll be competitive. Safe Passage, um, his last run was over 1,400. He's had a comeback run. So he's probably a fitter horse, but um, I think he's got his work cut out to beat Bless My Stars. I've included both in the pick six. Just one spook, if uh, the script was, uh, if things were to go against a script, one spook for you. I know Daryl has suggested the Peter Coupling of Meridius and a street art. What for you would possibly be a candidate for the upset or so to speak? Well, people may laugh at me, but I've included this horse, Pure Predator. Um, I know he's not well weighted, but he just gives me the impression the further he goes, the better, because he takes a long time to unwind. So I don't know what price Pure Predator is, but just include him into your trifectas. Thank you so, so much. Bless my star safe passage. The former being the uh, selection of uh, tipster but Darren Barrows as a win bet in race number seven. Race number eight. Now we saw a uh, revelation uh, from for all uh, one and for all and sundry, I should say, and that is uh, from Benetti when trying the twenty four hundred meters in the Spook Express, and it wasn't just surviving the race; actually, was uh, catchingly running on nicely. She was. Um, I think that pace suited her. That's from Explosive yeah. Bond, the lighter weights. Yes. I don't think uh, they went very hard in that race, so. I think that assisted her in seeing out the trip. Um, but, you know, I'll certainly give her a chance of here. Uh, but she doesn't form part of my top two selections. Um, in that race also was United Council. Now, United Council pulled like, uh, pulled uh, Samanga's arms out for, for half of the race. So, um, if she settles in running, I can see her possibly reversing that form. Um, you know, Cecil, the source Indian Ocean... Yeah, we all know she's related to Zeus, mm -hmm. and uh, he's just got better with age, and um, and uh, I can see her certainly featuring because she's relatively unexposed of this distance. She's got a light uh, mass to shoulder. Um, she's got a lot in her favour, but I'm just concerned. Uh, like we touched on during the week, that the stable has scratched a few runners recently, and one or two of them have run well below par. So if this filly is fit and well, I can see, certainly see her winning. Battleground, the race wasn't run to suit last time. I got caught flat-footed on the inside track. He'll run a much improved race. And also 20 drachmas since he stepped up in trip. And if he settles in running, he certainly can be a factor because he's got next to nothing to shoulder, only 54. So I made this a much more trickier race than what Darren Burroughs did. Okay, so the handicapper has got to 20 drachmas uh, once again, which was not to the amusement of one of the owners <laughs> in our post-race uh, interview. Mr. Burrows, uh, let's uh, touch on a race number eight, and uh, we know where your loyalties lie. You have pointed it out that uh, the eight uh, Indian Ocean is a big runner for you. Yeah, this is my strike for the day. Uh, trading at 33 to 10 or 3 to 1. Uh, this fully, I've always had... Um, 
I've always had high hopes for this filly. Um, in other words, I've rated her highly from day one. She's just an out-and-out stayer. She's got a beautiful big action. When she won her maiden at Gravel, she traveled four deep around the bend all the way, still extended from them with ease. And I thought this filly's going places, but I did think that she needs another year or six months to mature. And um, that's what they did. They put her away after that disappointing run, first run out the Maidens behind Rocky Reef um, and Quasi's Lady over 2,000, which was too short. And they brought her back over 2,000 meters. I thought it was going to be a bit short for her, but she absolutely trotted up. And I can only see her improving with time. So the fact that she's had another uh, month or two to mature, um, I think she's going to take a ton of beating with 51 and a half kilos because I thought Bonetta was the danger, but she can't possibly give her eight kilos over 2,400 meters. So I'm going in very confident Indian Ocean to win. Thank you so, so much. Let's confirm that is another striker for Darren. This is his big one on the afternoon at uh, Turfentine Indian Ocean, uh, race eight and number eight as we get into that uh, first leg of the last pick three.